words of the late great Nelson Mandela. One of the best ways to build up a child's future is by empowering them to speak up for themselves and stand up for themselves. But of course, their parents, guardians, teachers and mentors can always take charge and take the ultimate responsibility. But that is something quite different from patronizing them. Our rights as children must include the ability to be ourselves and stand up for ourselves. My name is Natalie Wamboy, I am 12 years old and on this day of the African child, allow me to share my thoughts with you on how I envision an Africa that is fit for me. Since the inception of this day almost three decades ago, we can all attest to the fact that a lot of progress has been made. Most stakeholders have intentionally worked together to implement a future where all children have an equal chance to live full and healthy lives. Although we still have a long way to go, let us begin by taking stock of the encouraging process that we have made as a continent in improving the odds of survival for our children. For a long time, major infectious diseases among children in Africa was a big problem that costed the lives of so many children. These diseases are the likes of malaria, diarrhea, acute respiratory infections, among others. Over the years, innovation is driving a remarkable decline in child deaths. Since the Millennium Development Goals were adopted in 2000, the rate of decline has accelerated in 90% of countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, according to Institute of Health metrics and evaluation. New vaccines, drugs, diagnostics and other health innovations has led to significant drop in development goals. The odds of survival for children rise sharply when their mothers can provide and care for them. On matters education, more children can be enrolled to school over the years. African girls jumped from 47% in 1990 to 77% in 2019, with the rate of boys rising from 58% to 80% according to the United Nations. Building of more schools and better infrastructure has significantly risen within the last two decades. That is a promising sign for Africa's efforts to drive down illiteracy and use education to fight poverty, diseases and other major setbacks across the continent. Another milestone is that, since 1990, the United Nations estimates that more than 60% of people in Sub-Saharan Africa have gained access to improved sources of drinking water. Also, with more access to knowledge, better nutrition is improving the odds of child survival in Africa. Risk factors like suboptimal breastfeeding, vitamin deficiencies, and childhood underweight are on the decline, leaving children less vulnerable to illnesses and diseases. Indeed, all this and many others are reasons for us as children to keep hope alive and be inspired to raise our voices towards realizing an Africa that is fit for all of us. As a young girl born and bred in Nairobi, Kenya, I feel that there are issues we need to confront, address and be intentional in order to create a healthy future. These are issues if ignored can bar children from living their full lives and which will later affect them as adults. A case in point is child abuse. Child abuse in Africa is a major threat to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals on the continent. The number of children on the continent who are abused have always been underestimated. Child abuse is defined by the World Health Organization as all forms of physical and emotional ill treatment, such as sexual abuse, neglect and exploitation that results in potential harm to the child's health, development or dignity. Child labor is common in African countries where grinding poverty propels children into work. 
Corporal punishment can be defined as the intentional infliction of physical pain with the purpose of deterring unwanted behavior. It remains a very common practice in most African households and schools. Harmful traditional practices like female genital mutilation is another worrying trend in our continent. Sadly, some communities allow young girls to undergo varying forms of genital excision leading to long-term problems. About 200,000 children are trafficked annually across our borders for domestic services and exploitive labor. These children experience a high level of maltreatment, physical abuse, and sexual harassment. An Africa Fit for Me should have education of the public on forms of violence and the rights of children. Governments, health sectors, social services, and justice systems should work together to fight this serious threat, not only to African children, but of course, to its future adults as well. Now, let's talk about menstruation and how so many young girls in Africa are forced to skip school one week in a month to avoid the shame of not having sanitary products. Statistics have shown that periods are one of the most major causes hindering young girls from graduating high schools in Africa. An Africa that is fit for me would look keenly to providing free sanitary products and raising menstrual awareness campaigns in order to fight and defeat the shame and stigma that comes with periods. On this platform, I also feel the need to talk about mental health. The growing awareness of the importance of mental health as a key component in child development has begun to be acknowledged. There has been little research in child mental health in Africa, yet many children go through adverse conditions that interfere with their physical, emotional and social development and place them at huge risk for psychological problems. An Africa fit for me would ensure that all children can access mental health specialists within their school and communities. There is no health without mental health and it's time we became candid on conversations revolving around mental health and wellness. To a topic that is so dear to me, education. This day of the African child has its origin in a shocking tragedy in 1976 when a protest by school children ended in bloodshed. But unfortunately, over 40 years later, children in many African countries are still deprived of their basic right to quality education. When it comes to education, quality is a must if we want to build a better future for the next generation. Educated children are vital for the health and prosperity of families, communities, and children. African countries should develop and implement programs that support children's achievements in education and through education. An Africa fit for me will be the one that in the midst of conflict and disaster, education will come in handy to sustain and save lives. At this time, we are going through a global pandemic that has changed our lives in so many aspects. The education sector in Africa has been adversely hit because classes can only be conducted virtually. Only a small percentage of children can access online learning due to the fact that their parents lack the necessary means and tools, which include electricity, reliable internet connectivity, a smartphone or a laptop. An Africa fit for me is one that governments can do more in making technology an effective and affordable tool that will be accessed by all children. Going forward, effective use of technological tools for learning should not just be emergency purposes but must be a long-term strategy to strengthen learning beyond this COVID-19 crisis. Lessons from this crisis should guide governments in investing in technology and internet penetration for all public schools in Africa. An Africa fit for me would be one that its citizens abide by the rule of law. One that is free from war and unrest. An Africa where corrupt leaders will be prosecuted and made answerable for their wrongdoings. Every child stands a chance to rise into leadership if they so desire without having to be cross-checked on which tribe they belong to or their economic backgrounds. An Africa that will unite and speak in one language to tackle all the issues that affect children. As children, 
We need guidance, hope, promise and love. And only a united Africa will deliver that to us. So in return, we need to grow up to become responsible individuals. Now, before I go, I must say that I am proudly African. An Africa that is fit for me is one that will teach us to embrace our diversity and embrace our culture. In it, we have our heritage. We are a rich people and we have a lot to offer. So let us take care of our wildlife and our environment as well. I am kindly reaching out to all children across Africa to ask them what they really think of when they imagine Africa as a fit for them. I want them to reimagine the words of the late Dr. Kwame Nkuruma. We are not African because we were born in Africa. We are African because Africa was born in us. I want all the children to come out and share their thoughts with their parents and their teachers and whoever surrounds them. It is time we make our voices heard. It is time we become part of the change that will make Africa a fit for all of us. I leave you all with a quote by Susan Gale and it says, Life doesn't always go according to plan. Sometimes heading in a new direction can be scary until you realize you're heading for a new and exciting destination. Thank you. <laughs>